Well, yesterday, Donald Trump promised a major announcement. That's what he called it, a major announcement. And today, Donald Trump made what he called a major announcement. And if you haven't heard about it, that's because it amounted to nothing particularly newsworthy other than another revelation of the constant mental turmoil that is Donald Trump's mind. In the second month of the Trump presidency, we called in the psychiatrists on this program. That's right. After four weeks of the Trump presidency, what we were seeing was something far beyond the reach of the usual tools of political analysis. We were seeing a 21st century version of the madness of King George III. Here is what the first psychiatric discussion of Donald Trump sounded like on this program in February of 2017. If we could construct a psychiatric Frankenstein monster, we could not create a leader more dangerously mentally ill than Donald Trump. He's a paranoid, psychopathic narcissist who's divorced from reality and lashes out impulsively at his imagined enemies. He can't stand an aspect of reality that uh, he doesn't want, so he rejects it. His grasp of reality and his uh, attention to reality is, is loose, an extremely dangerous trait in a president actually makes him unqualified. After that diagnosis of Donald Trump, nothing he's done has been truly surprising. None of the crimes he appears to have committed are inconsistent with that diagnosis. The January 6th committee will meet on Monday and very likely send a criminal referral to the Justice Department on Donald Trump and possibly many of his associates who were trying to criminally overthrow the constitutional order of this country leading up to and including January 6th, simply for the greater glory of Donald Trump. They were doing it for the egomania of Donald Trump. Somewhere inside Donald Trump, he knows what the psychiatrists are saying about him is true. The externalities of Donald Trump are a constant fireworks display designed by Donald Trump to hide how he sees himself. But today, today Donald Trump revealed just how much he hates what he sees when he looks at himself. His major announcement was this. He called this a major announcement, a Donald Trump digital trading card that you can get online buying from Donald Trump for only $99. That's $99 which Donald Trump so desperately needs that he put out that digital card. He said it is very much like a baseball card. Those were his words. Very much like a baseball card. When Donald Trump was in high school, he was playing baseball, he no doubt dreamed, as all of us do when we're kids playing baseball, of someday being on a baseball card. But he wasn't good enough. And he knows he wasn't good enough. Donald Trump knows that he doesn't look like the fake superhero in that card that he put out today, but he is telling you very openly and very desperately how much he wishes that he looked like that. That image is a precise measure of just how inadequate Donald Trump feels. That's the way Donald Trump thinks he should look. Let's take a look at it again. Let's take a look at the way Donald Trump thinks he should look. Let's put that back up the screen on the screen of the control room can. Look at that. Look at that. That is Donald Trump's hope of the way you see him. That's the way he wants to look. But the bathroom mirror cruelly tells him exactly how he does look. And there's nothing wrong with the way Donald Trump looks in real life. But Donald Trump thinks so. Donald Trump thinks the 76-year-old overweight version of himself isn't worth $99. And so this tortured man puts out this demented image of himself in a desperate attempt at a kind of glorification he knows he can never have 
and his continuing attempt to vacuum up money from his gullible supporters. One of the public defenders of a January 6th attacker of the Capitol said at his sentencing hearing, his outspoken vulgar online persona belied a roiling inner turmoil about his place in the world in a deep sense of inadequacy. That picture of Donald Trump is the very picture of a roiling inner turmoil about his place in the world and a deep sense of inadequacy. The Justice Department is already investigating Donald Trump for multiple potential crimes, and so the January 6th committee's referral of Donald Trump to the Justice Department for criminal prosecution for his activities leading up to and on January 6th will not be necessary to actually get that investigation started because it's already underway, supervised now by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith. But it will be the first time in history that a congressional committee recommends a president or former president be investigated for criminal conduct. It will take its place in the congressional record and prominently in history as a profoundly important statement for Congress to make if the January 6th committee chooses to do so. One member of the January 6th committee, Adam Kinzinger, said yesterday that he believes Donald Trump is absolutely guilty of a crime. Those are his words, absolutely guilty. A former attorney for Donald Trump, Ty Cobb, says that he expects the January 6th committee to issue a criminal referral to the Justice Department on Donald Trump. In its hearing on Monday, the January 6th committee is expected to present their findings and vote to adopt their final report and any criminal referrals the committee may also choose to make. When speaking with reporters today, Chairman Benny Thompson hinted that the hearing will include new evidence. Quote, it could be evidence that we have not shared in the hearings. It could very well be. A committee source tells NBC News that parts of the report itself were sent to the printing office today in preparation for release next Wednesday.